Welcome to the Known Victory Church YouTube channel. We are so glad that you found us today. We exist to make Jesus known and to be a place that anyone can call home. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe, like, and share these messages so we can truly make Jesus known in our homes, cities, and across the world. We pray that this message impacts you and helps you to grow closer to Jesus. So good to see uh, everyone here this morning. Uh, we know we've been having some beautiful weather. The Oilers won yesterday. Um, we'll see, you know. Um, but before I start, I just want to let you know that this uh, coming Saturday, June 22nd, we have something called Walk for Jesus, kind of gathering a lot of the Christians in the area to go to Sky Rattler Park uh, uh, June 22nd, this Saturday at 12 o'clock noon, Sky Rattler Park. And so I want to encourage you uh, to maybe come be a part of that uh, this Saturday. If you have any questions about it, uh, Walk for Jesus happening this Saturday, June 22nd, Sky Rattler Park. If you have any questions, come chat with me. I'd love to uh, tell you more information about it. But again, happy Father's Day to all you fathers out there. Today is a great, exciting day to celebrate um, our fathers and celebrate um, our grandparents and celebrate just, you know, fathers. And, and of course, that's kind of what the point of it is. And I've been a father uh, almost four years now. Um, and for some of you, you're like, I've been a father for longer than you've been alive. And you'd be right. Like, probably it's true. But I've been a father for four years. And it's one of the most important things that I have in my life. One of the most important things that I do in life is I'm a father. And I love my children. I love being a father. Obviously, it has challenges, as every dad knows, as every parent knows. It's not always a walk in the park. It's not always easy. But I've had all these opportunities to learn and grow in patience and grow in humility and the ability to love my kids the best that I can. And I think we all know um, that fathers are the funniest people on the planet. Um, it's true. Um, and I know this because uh, it's, it's just a fact. Like, I don't know how else to tell you. And so I want to start today and tell you some, some jokes that I found. Um, and, and the first one is, is, why should you not use an unsharpened pencil? Uh, because it's pointless. <laughs> yeah, hilarious. This, this is my favorite one right here. It says, why did the man fall down the well? because he couldn't see that well. <laughs> okay, that is actually really funny, okay? He couldn't see that well. Uh, do you want to hear my joke about construction? Well, I'm still working on it. <laughs> it's a true story, too. Uh, and then this is the last one, is that I'm sure you've heard about Humpty, how Humpty Dumpty had a great fall, but his summer wasn't bad either. <sighs> Hilarious jokes. Dads are the funniest people on the planet. Um, but today I want to share a message with us called the traits of a good father. What are some of the traits that the, good, the greatest fathers have? What are some of the traits and characteristics that we have? And of course, scripture is filled with encouragements to fathers and to parents on you know, raising up our kids and taking care of our kids. And there's so many. And I, don't have, I only have five for us today, but I want to share with you some of the traits the Bible speaks of when it comes to being good fathers, and number one is this, is that he provides for his children. See, well, I think one of the biggest insecurities that we have as men would be the inability to provide for our families. Now, I look at that as a personal reflection uh, of my own life, the moments in my life that I've felt the most insecure or felt the most um, that I've struggled the most is oftentimes correlated to the moments when providing for my family has become extremely difficult. I think we as fathers, we have this desire to provide for our families because if we don't, it's one of our greatest fears for, for my wife and my kids to go without because I couldn't provide for them. And this isn't just something that I struggle with. The Bible actually shows us the reality of providing for our children. This is what it says in 1 Timothy 5, 8. But, but those who won't care for their relatives, especially those in their own household, have denied the true faith. Such people are worse than unbelievers. It's a kind of harsh uh, revelation or a harsh command of provision uh, for our families. And I think this is the greatest fathers. What do we do? We provide. 
It's important for us to provide. It teaches us how important it is. But we live in a culture where, unfortunately, many men can't or don't live up to this call of providing for their family. Many men, instead of providing, actually run away. They run away to never return. And men, we need to provide for our families. Now, I'm not just talking about financial provision, but I'm talking about physical, emotional, and spiritual provision for our families. That is not just financial, but a physical and emotional and spiritual provision, a space where we can meet the needs that our children have. I think it can be easy for some of us as men to meet the financial and physical needs. We provide money, we provide, give them a place to sleep, food to eat, clothes to wear, but that's sometimes where our provision stops. Is we're meeting their physical needs, but how many of you know when you have kids, they got a lot more needs than just physical? Even when you're married, you know that your spouse has more needs than just the physical needs. There's, these, there's a deep sense in the, our children's soul where they're longing for our attention. They're longing for us to be present. They're longing for us to lead them spiritually. And as men, our responsibility as fathers is to lead our family and provide for them what they need. I think it can be easy for some of us, to, again, to meet the financial and physical needs, but we have no emotional or spiritual connection with our children. We can't meet their emotional needs. We might not even know what they are, and of course, every child is different, but we need to learn as, as fathers to provide for them in all of the ways that they need from us, to actually be present with our children to have conversations with them, to be present in their biggest moments, the highs of sports and graduations and, and, and art and music and school, but also be present with them in their hardest moments. And it's not always easy because we, I, we all know as, as parents, we go through our own stuff. And this past weekend, we were, we were in Calgary and, and, and we always go and stay with my aunt and uncle. And, and it was very funny to me because we stayed there a few nights and every single morning my, my uncle just retired and every single morning my Jane, our daughter, would get up and she slept in, our, in the same room as us. She'd get up, she'd sneak out of the room and go upstairs and have hour-long conversations with, her, with my uncle. And I'm like, I'm not joking, like conversations. They'd sit there eating fruit and just talking for an hour. And, and I was thinking about it. I'm like, that's what my daughter needs is moments and people willing to invest into not just her physical needs, but her emotional needs as well of conversation and connection. And how many moments I look in my life where, where, where getting up in the morning with my kids is one of the things that I, that I really wish I didn't have to do. But how important those moments are for us to provide for our children as men not just the physical needs and this, but emotionally and spiritually. That we're reading scriptures with our kids, we're praying with our kids. And that leads me to my next one today is this, is that great fathers, what do we do? We pray for our children. I think sometimes as fathers, we don't know how to pray or what to pray for our kids. I think sometimes we feel disconnected from our children. I think one of the best things we can do and we don't know what to pray, what do we do? We go to the scriptures and we see what some of the fathers before us prayed over their children. And here is a prayer that David prayed over his son. It might be a prayer that we, that we might even want to start praying over our children. It's First Chronicles 29. It says, give me my son Solomon the wholehearted desire to obey all your commands, laws, and decrees. And then next, do everything necessary to build this temple for which I have made these preparations. See, I think as, as parents, as fathers, our greatest accomplishment in life is less about what our kids do, but it's more about teaching them and praying that they will follow Jesus when they get older. That our greatest accomplishment I think we can have as parents is when we see our kids serving Jesus. And that's what this prayer was. It says, Give my son the wholehearted desire to obey all your commands, laws, and decrees. See, I think oftentimes we pray for the outcome of our children, where they're going to go and who they're going to be with. We want to know what they're, pray for their education and follow the right career path. 
Rather than our prayers being, God, I pray that my kid, my child learns to learn, learns to love you and serve you. That's how this prayer started, to follow everything God had commanded. See, I think as fathers, we need to be praying for our children, not only for them to grow up, to be hardworking people, to get good jobs and to find a house uh, uh, and a spouse, but more importantly, that they will learn to love Jesus and pursue him. And the other things are secondary. See, we can pray that God will guide them, that our children will realize the power of the love of God and the grace that he pours out for many. See, the question I have for us as fathers is, are we praying for our children? Are we praying for our children when we're with them, and are we praying for, for our children when we're not with them? See, me and Jane, we've prayed together pretty much every night since she's been born. Pretty much every single night we've prayed together. But I better be praying for her outside of that moment as well. Because, you know, she's getting older. There's things that are coming up. There, there's a lot of things she even works through. And my job as a father is to be praying for my children. Are you praying for your kids? See, the prayer of a father is very powerful. And our children need to hear their dads praying. And to know that their dads are praying for them. I encourage you, pray for your kids. And if you don't know what to pray, open up the scriptures and find the things that your children need. And then number, th number three, or the next one here is that uh, what are good fathers? Good fathers are good to their wives. See, as, as fathers, we, are, we show our kids how to love. We sh teach our kids how to act. And a lot of that comes from how we treat each other in our marriage. How do we talk to each other? How do we treat each other? And I know that Jane is listening, right? Your kids are listening to you. How do I know this? There was one time, Beth and I, we were talking about something very serious. And, and when we get talking about something serious, we're not angry at each other, but we, get, we can tend to get very animated in how we talk. Like extremely animated. You probably know what I'm talking about. You might have conversations with your spouse that if someone walked in, they'd be like, Whew. but you're not even mad at each other. You're talking and, and, you're, and you're having a conversation. And Jane comes and she says, dad, mom, you better be kind to each other. That's what she said. I'm not joking. True story. And I'm like, Jane, we are being kind to each other. We're just talking about something super serious. But our kids are listening to us. Our kids are watching how we treat each other, how we treat our spouses. And as good fathers, one of the best ways we mirror God's love is by loving our spouse. And it's the same thing for wives. How we love and treat each other, our kids are paying attention. If we want to be a good father, we got to make sure that our marriage is right. We gotta make sure that we're healthy together. Our children are watching. And this is the call laid out in scriptures by Paul in Ephesians 5, 25. For husbands, this means love your wives just as Christ loved the church. He gave up his life for her to make her holy and clean, washed by the cleansing of God's word. He did this to present her to himself as a glorious church without a spot or wrinkle or any other blemish. Instead, she will be holy and without fault. And this is it. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as they love their own bodies. For a man who loves his wife actually shows love for himself. See, as, as, as men, as husbands, as fathers, how do we love our, li our wives is by laying down our lives for them laying down all that we are for them. In the same way that Jesus did, we need to love her in that same way. We're to love them, love our spouses in the same way that we love ourselves. But I think one of the biggest problems that we face as men is a lack of love for ourselves. Now, maybe, like I'm speaking from my own story of how many times my insecurities have come up of, of me thinking I'm so horrible. Like, how could I do that? How could I say this? And there's this, this idea, and I stop, stop loving myself. I stop loving who God created me to be. And as I stop loving myself, what happens? My love for the people around me goes way down. 
And you know what's going to happen is that the more insecure and the less I love myself, who God created me to be, the less I'm going to be able to love my spouse. And in turn, the less I'm going to be able to love my kids. If we want to learn how to be good fathers, we need to learn to love who God created us to be so that way we can love our spouses and our kids in a beautiful and powerful way. We got to love ourselves. But I think a lot of men... The struggle is tough when it comes to loving ourselves. We get so down on ourselves when we do something wrong or we say the wrong thing. And I would encourage you to find out who you are, who God created you to be, and know that he loves you. And in turn, you can learn how to love yourselves too, to love yourselves with humility and not pride, not in a boastful way. See, our kids are not just watching how we treat each other. Our kids are watching how we treat ourselves. They're watching how we talk to our spouse. How we handle conflict, how we handle hardship, and how we treat each other through it. Our kids are watching. And I think as fathers, one of the best ways we to love our kids is to love their mother. To care for her to respect her, to admire her, to love her, to take care of her. I think that's one of the best ways we can show our kids how much we love them is by loving our spouse. And I would encourage you in your relationship, if you're married, create space to date each other. Create space to go away together. Create space to go on dates. Create space, I know we're busy but I would encourage you, I don't want to get to a point even in my own relationship, my own marriage, where I look back, I'm like, man, I wish we would have spent more time, just the two of us. You have time for one another. You just got to create it. And this one here is, the next one is, he teaches his children. What makes a good father? He teaches his children. See, I believe that fathers are the greatest teachers our children will ever have. There are many ways we teach our kids. We, but as we just talked about how, 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 how we live as the greatest teacher. See, we can tell our kids about forgiveness. We can tell our kids about anger. We can tell our kids about patience. But it's how we respond to those moments that's actually going to be the greatest teacher. If we don't model forgiveness, it's going to be tough for our kids to live it out. We gotta model what we're talking about. See, if we don't if we don't put value on something in our own life, they will think it has little importance. See, we can read to them and we can speak to them, but we also have to show them. We have to show them how to work hard. We have to show them how to be respectful. We have to show them how to forgive. We have to show them how to be generous and show them how to deal with our anger and show them how to deal with our failure and show them how to deal with despair how do you respond when these things come up it's not just about what we say but it's about how we act and in our life you know we try and limit the screen time for our kids because that's just a good thing yeah we try and limit it but then i think about how many times i'm like jane you cannot go you cannot watch a show. And then I just pull up my phone and I'm like playing a game on it. And she'll tell me, she's like, dad, you got to put your game away. And I'm like, you're right. You're right. Because I, she knows that I'm doing exactly what I told her she's not allowed to do. We have to model it in our own lives. And in Proverbs chapter 22, verse six, it says this, direct your children onto the right path. And when they are older, they will not leave it. How do we direct our kids? We become trailblazers. And not, we don't just settle. We, we actually create the path sometimes. We blaze the trail ahead. We create the path and they follow us. If we want our kids to act or talk or behave a certain way, we need to be the ones who model it first and bring them with us along the journey. Are you modeling what it means to follow Jesus at home? Are you modeling what it means to follow Jesus at work? Are you modeling what it means? Are you modeling it? (coughs) 
And the last one I have that makes good fathers is he disciplines his children. See, discipline is a key to being a parent or being a father. And a key to life is discipline. Disciplining ourselves, disciplining others. I think sometimes it's a lot easier to discipline others than it is to discipline ourselves. I think it's, it's easier a lot of the times to, to, to decide what your children are and not allowed to eat than it is to determine what you're allowed and not allowed to eat. We don't just give ca- Jane bags of candy. But sometimes there's times where I get a bag of candy and then by the time I look down, it's all gone. I ate the whole bag. And I'm like, I wish somebody would take it away from me, right? It's hard to discipline ourselves. We need to model discipline in our lives as much as we need to discipline our own kids. And this is one of the most iconic verses when it comes to discipline for our children in the Bible. Proverbs 13, verse 24. It says this, those who spare the rod of discipline hate their children, and those who love their children care enough to discipline them. See, if we love our kids, which I, I know we do, we all love our children, we need to learn to discipline and discipline well, and not just well, but discipline the same. Like, 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 like follow through with our discipline. See, what exactly is discipline? Well, how I view it is a form of correction to get them back on the path. They might be taking a couple steps away. We try and correct them so they can make it back to the path. And sometimes we're weaving in and out. It's, it's a journey to correct and discipline and move our kids where we believe God has called them to be and, and, and f- teach them ha- how to follow the scriptures. It can be a journey to train them up in the way they should go. See, children, just like you and me, they, they, they have things they don't like to do. They have things that they don't enjoy doing. They have things they love to do like we do. And there's a lot of things, chores and tasks that we just don't enjoy. We gotta teach our kids to do them anyways. We need to discipline our children. We can't let them get away with doing nothing and going nowhere. We gotta discipline our kids and again, discipline them well. See, discipline isn't about hurting our children. It's about correcting our children. It's not about showing dominance. It's about showing compassion and love, but with, with, with correction. It's not about showing how powerful we are. It's about showing how patient we can be. That we need to guide and direct our children. See, it's a love that pushes them and pushes us to be the best version of ourselves and the best version of themselves. We need to learn to discipline, but not in a place of showing our dominance, but showing them God's love. You know, I wanna, we're gonna you know, end shortly, but I wanna leave you with a last encouragement to all us fathers here is, is just this idea that don't quit. Don't give up. Don't quit. Keep ongoing. I know there's days where it's hard. I know there's days where our insecurities are attacking us from the inside and days where we don't even know what to do. We don't know what to do with our kids and our anger is through the roof and our impatience is is going so strong and we're like, God, I don't know what to do. Don't quit. You know how I know men don't like to quit is fishing. Fishing is one of these odd things that people do. What do we do? We go and we buy all these lures because someone on YouTube told us they were going to work. And we go out, and what happens? They don't work. Now, I've never met a fisherman who's like, that's it, I'm done. I quit. I'm selling all my stuff. That's it. They're like, I'm going to research tonight what the next lure is I need to get. So we go to the store and we buy that lure, and guess what? It doesn't work. And then you look in your bag, your tackle box, and you look in, and what do you find? A five of diamonds you haven't used in 15 years, but you used to catch all the fish. We don't like to quit. And we saw this last night with the Oilers, down 3-0. What do they do? They go and they score more goals in one game than they did all series. We don't like to quit. But I think so many times quitting is, is a temptation we as men have to give up. You know, the suicide rate among men is, is extremely, extremely high. 
Mental health problems among men is extremely high. Anxiety, depression is extremely high. It's a struggle for a lot of men. A lot of us men, we struggle with our mental health and we struggle with just wanting to give up. And I want to encourage you, don't quit. Don't quit loving your kids. Don't quit showing them and training them in the way they should go. Don't quit. Don't stop equipping them. Don't stop fighting for them. Don't stop loving yourself. Don't quit. I know that can be the temptation, right? Especially when we're not seeing the results. See, as men, we like results. We like to accomplish stuff. And if we're not seeing the results, we're like, ah, I gotta try something else. This isn't working. Keep on going. Keep on pursuing Jesus on your own. And watch your children follow you. And I want to encourage you, just like I said on Mother's Day, dads, you're doing a good job. You're doing a great job. And I think as men, we don't hear it very often. But you're doing a great job. You're doing a good job. Keep on going. Don't quit. Keep on fighting. And mom, same. Don't give up. Keep on going. Don't stop. Make yourself better. See, I think our kids deserve the best version of us. And what does that mean? We gotta keep on fighting. We gotta keep on getting healthy. We gotta keep on working on our anger. We gotta keep on working on our addictions. We gotta keep on fighting. Don't quit. Keep on going. You're doing a good job. And happy Father's Day. We did it. We made it. I'm gonna pray for us as dads today. So God, I thank you for each dad sitting here in this room today, each dad watching online, each, each father hearing my voice, God, I thank you that you will build up a courage inside of them to not quit. You'll build up a courage inside of them to keep on going and to keep on fighting, to not give up. God, I thank you that we have some incredible fathers in this room. Some fathers that aren't just fathers to their own kids, but are fathers to those who don't have kids, who don't have fathers. The people who go walking around who don't have fathers in their lives, God, I pray that we as a church, we will rise up, we as men will rise up, and we'll be the father to the fatherless, just like you are. That we will reach out to those who don't have fathers, and we can step into that place. God, our world needs strong men and strong fathers. And God, I thank you that you are raising up strong men in our church. You're raising up strong men, not men who are, you're raising up men who are confident in, in who they are, who you created them to be. God, that you're raising up courageous and strong men to keep on going and not quit and keep on fighting and providing and praying and loving our kids. God, I pray that you encourage every father hearing my voice to know that they're doing a good job. And God, I pray that we as men, all our weaknesses, God, I pray that you help us become strong. You help us be able to carry our families and provide for our families and love our families. God, I thank you that as we follow you, as, we, as you guide us, God, I thank you that you're raising us up to be good men. In Jesus' name, amen.